So this project is something that um, I've been wanting to do for quite a number of years. Um, this came out in Electronics Australia in March 1979, so it's gone back a while. Now as with any um, project, it's important to read through write the project information and also just running through your right, um, schematic you know, of the circuit, um, your general layouts as, as depicted here but also going through your parts list and you know, I'm um, checking that off and making sure that you've got the components and with these older type projects like this um, that, the pro um, that the parts or components are still available. So we've got the um, circuit board here. Um, the first thing that we've put in are the um, resistors. So we've gone through and checked off the list. Uh, we've checked all these resistors for the values to make sure they're in tolerance. And that's going to be the first items or components that we're going to be um, soldering to the board. We've got the components soldered to the board. Um, we did have an interesting situation with reference to the, the 100K potentiometer, but I'll show that in a minute. The next stage that we've got to do is to fit these components onto right, the panel. So what we've got to do now is is measure up for the, the diameters that we've got to drill. So what we've got here is um, 100k potentiometer and, and obviously the older style potentiometers were um, a wider base and a straight line right fitting whereas these newer ones are offset in the, you know, with the centre pin and they're smaller so what we had to do is um, solder some right pins in and then we had to adjust the pins so that they fitted to the legs of the potentiometer and we had to adjust the legs of the potentiometer to fit to the pins and then we just soldered the whole thing together so we've got a fairly rigid setup there. So with reference to the panel um, what we've done here is as you can see we've got a um, right, the cardboard backing and that's been all varnished um, but prior to that we actually glued on the original front panel photocopy um, as we've got nothing else to actually make the front panel out of so we just thought that was a quick and easy way to do it um, if we want to change it later on we can so the first thing we're going to put on is the potentiometer and we've got to get a measurement across this point here and I find the easiest way to do that is to get some inside calipers and just adjust them just so you just get a just a slide fit, you can just feel a, a, a little bit of resistance but it actually just moves through quite easily. Now what I'll do is I'll get a ruler and measure that, that's about 8mm so what we'll do is just go up to 8.5mm so that'll just give us a little bit of play. So what we have here is the area where the potentiometer has got to fit into um, now that's enough to line up and drill but the problem we got is that underneath we've got these spaces you know for the box itself and consequently that's going to make that not a very rigid fitting so what I'm going to do is just place some ply under that area there and line that up with the so it sits behind the potentiometer area and what I'll do is clamp down on that whole thing so I'm just going to line that up with the drill and then what we can do now is put our hole downs and it's actually clamping down onto the the board underneath and the plastic. And the problem you've got with drilling plastic is that it has a tendency to lift. And the other thing that we're doing is starting with a smaller drill bit. So we've got our space of sacrificial board underneath. Um, we've clamped down on both our things, not too hard but firm. And what we're going to do now is just put a four and a half mil drip. Um, drill bit through and then what we'll do then is put a 8.5 drill bit through. So we've drilled our 4.5mm hole so now we'll drill the 85 through so now what we're going to do is um, there's a small tag on the potentiometer itself um, which is offset from center and that stops it from spinning around and again just using the calipers um, I'm just going to get it so it just slides through comfortably so what we've done is we've 
basically so on, lined it up with the area that we've got to drill and clamp down, so we'll just drill that hole through. So the next thing we're going to put on is these, um, the switch for the power supply. So what I'll do here is uh, just get a measurement there, again just adjusting it to uh, just get it to slide through so I can feel just a slight bit of resistance. Right, that's, that's going through just nicely. Take a measurement of that one and that's 5 mil so we'll go 5.5. So we've got set up to put our hole for our switch for the power supply. Now initially this has a had a internal battery power supply but I'll be attaching it to an external supply and just having an on off switch on the right box itself. So we'll just put this hole through. So now what we've got is our output. Um, plug area and our sink plug area so we have those here um, as you can see I'm going to use those connectors and we've got to fit this onto there so we'll just get a measurement and then we'll do that as we did before and then we can measure that and in this case here we've got uh, 6 mil so we'll get 6.5 for both of them So we can start putting our connectors on, so we'll put our output and inputs on first. The switch, so we'll put the switch on. The other one here we're going to have to trim off, um, that's too long so we'll have to do some measurements for that. Um, I'll trim that off and then put that on. So now what we're going to do is put the power socket in. Um, now all I've done here is just put a bit of masking tape on, I've just done a diagonal to find, you know, basically centre it, doesn't have to be exact. And we'll just drill that hole there for the power supply. We'll just get a measurement, the, this does have flats on it but we're not going to worry about the flats, it doesn't need to. And again, just a firm fit. Now we can't go too big for this one because there's only a very small rim on that. So this one's going to have to be done fairly accurately. Alright, so just get a measurement on that and that is 10, 11, 12, about 13 mil. So as you can see on the small drill press, or a woodwork drill press, um, we only have marginal room and and unfortunately, once we put this bit in, we can't get it out. So what we're going to have to do is just take this very slowly. Um, it's been clamped down on the bottom, so it can't pull up. But um, if we're careful, then it should go through, hopefully, without any problems. So what we're fitting now is the um, printer circuit board, um, that'll go on the inside of the box of course but we've marked the positions on the outside. We basically squared that up, centered it up and then we've gone around with a drill bit of the same size hole which is about 3mm or actually it's a 1 8 hole and got our positions so what we'll do now is drill those. So we're basically set up, we just swapped over to our drill bit and we're just going to put these four holes in. So what I've got here is just some 
countersink screws, uh, machine screws. So we're just going to um, put, put a countersink in so they just kind of sit flush. So I've just put the screws in for the circuit board and just tighten those up. As you can see there we've got our four um, retaining screws in for the circuit board. We've got the print circuit board temporarily put in. We've still got to wire all that up yet and we've got our power supply connection uh, put onto the side and put the lid on. Um, it's going to basically look like that. We've just got to put the, the um, potentiometer in. I've just got to tri trim that off and then we can put that on and then we can start doing the wiring up. So we've got all the uh, right um, holes drilled and all the outside components put on including the potentiometer which we had to trim off because the um, shaft length was too long so that's all done uh, that's your on off switch and obviously that's your output and your sink and your power supply in we've got our wires um, attached to the board so we've got power um, the two signal wires um, for the sink and the output and then the ones going to the potentiometer so what we're doing now is just going to put the various ICs in into their sockets. So we've got all the components in now. So um, the ICs have just been put in. And what we're ready up to now is to um, make up a power cord for this. Once we get the power cord made, then we can uh, test it. All the wiring's done. Um, we have our power coming in here. Um, these are our outputs and our sync output. This is the control pipe for the amplitude of your output and I just put a switch in there so we can switch it on and off externally. Um, there's your adjustment for your sink pulse width. Other than that, that's the only adjustments on there. So just with a um, add-on with reference to adjustments for this, as you can see here we can adjust the sink width or pulse width. So what I've done here is just put a hole through right the back of the um, right container. So what we could do now is that we can put an adjustment tool in. I've just got a screwdriver here for the adjustment and we haven't got access to that pot there. So we can adjust that if we get any drift. Um, what we've done now is just made up um, three of the cables that we need for the operation of this unit. We've got the power cable. Um, this runs on nine volts DC. And then we've got your output and your synchronization cable, which I've got color coded accordingly. Um, we've finished the IHF 1 kilohertz Tamburse source, and we use this in audio amplifiers um, to check response. The actual circuit itself is um, fairly straightforward and basic. Um, the only control we have on here is your level control, which controls the amplitude of right your 1 kilohertz signal. Here, that's your sync pulse that's coming through, um, you yeah, know, and that triggers that burst there. So if we adjust the input, you can see here we can make it smaller or bigger. And we'll be using this to uh, test the various audio amplifiers as, as we need to.